to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, it's May 3rd, 2023, at 10.03 a.m. Call this meeting to order. Please note the uh, presence of Sean Secor and Jeff Arnett as commissioners. We will start with consent and approval with our county administrator, Renetta McCoy. Good morning, morning. Renetta. Good morning. Good morning. We have 20 exonerations for 9,626.27. Minutes for April 26, 2023. Vouchers General County Fund 254. Fifty-one dollars ninety-six cents. Nine one 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 thousand nine ten twenty-seven. Chestnut Ridge Park one thousand eight ninety-four thirty-four. Camp Muffley one thousand five twenty-three oh one. Mason Dixon Park five sixty-nine ninety-six. Recreation Levy three oh nine twenty-six. Assessor's valuation fifty-eight fifty. Day Report Center ninety-seven thousand three sixty-eight oh one. Purchasing card vouchers General County six thousand sixty-nine dollars and seventy-nine cents. 911-24326, home confinement 7,169.99. Camp Muffley 484.59, Mason Dixon Park 43.95, for a voucher total of 371,696.89. We have no budget revisions. Position vacancies for boards and authorities are listed on our website. And fiduciary orders for May 3rd, 2023. Move to approve consent agenda as presented. Second, and properly moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I should note that uh, Commissioner Bloom is on vacation as well. He's not here. I meant to mention that earlier. Um, we now have introduction of new employees, personnel changes. Sheriff Perry Palmer. Um, he's actually just transferring an employee from the processing transport division to court security. Lydia Wolf. Um, she, that is effective May 1st. Her new salary would be $2,743.04 a month. Move to approve the transfer as presented. Second. Um, properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And I think Lydia was in security before, wasn't she? Court security? Uh, that's a different Lydia. Oh, okay. And then um, the prosecuting attorney also has a part time temporary employee that they sent me yesterday. Um, actually, it was Monday afternoon she sent this to me. Uh, let's see. Raylan Jones is temporary part-time position of administrative assistant. Uh, beginning May the 2nd, uh, should be for a four- to six-week period. That salary would be $30,000. Move to approve the personnel as presented. Second. Properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Carries. Uh, welcome to the county. Now we have uh, comments from the public at this time. Anyone wishing to come forward and speak on about any matter you want concerning the county, you have uh, uh, three minutes or so to uh, speak your piece, as they say. So please come to the podium, give your name and address, and let's hear what you have to say. Good morning. My name is Jason Charles. I am known by no other name. I do not have an address to provide for you because it was taken away from me when I was unlawfully incarcerated. Today, I'm at a loss for words. I have nothing to say today. I'm just baffled that people are so blinded by the truth, that they are blinded that they can't see the truth. That's my only concern. Thank you. Anyone else? Mayor Lewis. Um, Patricia Lewis, mayor from the town of Granville. Um, I know I normally speak during the elected officials portion, but I do have a couple comments that I'd like to make uh, prior to your new business today. And I do acknowledge that you are looking at a public hearing on June 7th and that we do have a work session scheduled uh, with the commission on May the 24th uh, concerning this TIF. As an official representing the town of Granville and the residents and businesses, I'd like to make the following comments prior to the new business listed on your agenda items 10A and 10B. The TIF district as it is right now includes a large part of the town of Granville. The University Town Center and the new business development at the town center has contributed a lot of TIF revenues that fund the development in this district. We've asked the county commission and I acknowledge um, to have a work session to address how the district funds would be used in any capacity to support development uh, in the town of Granville and that meeting I acknowledge is on May 24th. 
We regularly attend commission meetings and ask for information about the TIF, but we've not been involved in any meetings or discussions about extending that TIF for 15 years or adopting a new project plan. We understand the state law does not require the commission to get Granville's approval to extend that time period of the TIF, but the de decision to extend the TIF or to keep it at the same determination date as it is, it is right now is important for our town. The termination date reflects uh, directly on us by taxes on the extra value of the real estate developed in Granville, and that those funds could be used to fund our general um, operations, including up, upkeep of our streets and providing public safety funds that could be used in the town of Granville. If this TIF is extended for an additional 30 years to 2053, if property values would stay the same, as they are for 2024, our contribution this year alone out of property tax loss to the town is $510,000. Over 30 years, that equates to $15,300,000. That's money that's not gonna stay in Granville. Um, we would appreciate the opportunity to, to discuss with the commission, and I'm hoping this is gonna happen on May 24th, um, and the developer, about the purposes of extending the district and how the district project plan will support any kind of new development um, in the town of Granville, not just West Ridge. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Lewis. Anyone else? Comments? Moving on then, we have a proclamation, Better Hearing and Speech Month. Do we have anyone here? Yep, we do. Yeah, please come forward. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Sandy Campbell and I'm from the Quota Club of Morgantown and um, we have a proclamation to read to you hoping that you will approve it today. Wonderful. Um, whereas the Monongalia County Commission is pleased to join with Quota Club of Morgantown and all citizens of Monongalia County in celebrating May as Better Hearing and Speech Month. This annual event provides opportunities to raise awareness about communication disorders and to promote treatment that can improve the quality of life for those who experience problems with speaking, understanding, or hearing. And whereas 17% of all Americans experience some form of hearing loss, costing the United States billions due to lost work, pro productivity, special education, and medical treatment, West Virginia's population of approximately 1.8 million indicates that an estimated 306,000 individuals may be living with varying degrees of hearing loss throughout our state. Whereas the Monongahela County Commission and Quota Club of Morgantown salute the 1,026 audiologists and speech language pathologists who work tirelessly in our state to bring better hearing and speech to those individuals who are affected by these communication disorders. Whereas during this annual observance, the Monongahela County Commission and the Quota Club of Morgantown encourage the citizens of Monongahela County to focus their attention on the needs of our citizens who have some form of hearing, speech, or language impairment to ensure that everyone has access to the audiology and speech language pathology treatment that will help them lead full and productive lives. Whereas by recognizing these challenges to draw attention to these needs, shine a light on those often invisible disabilities, and to bring attention to the negative consequences of untreated hearing loss. Now, therefore, we, the members of Monongay County Commission, join together with the Quota Club of Morgantown and the citizens of Monongay County in recognizing May 2023 as Better Hearing and Speech Month. And by a drawing attention to these needs, shine a light on those often invisible disabilities and to bring attention to the negative consequences of untreated hearing loss. Thank you. Thank you. I move to approve the resolution as presented. Second. Mm -hmm. Properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, a picture? 
Sure. Sure. Just want to come down there. They're okay. And she is too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we'll need to get them to sign that. Okay. Yeah, That's great. Okay. You could just give it to Kelly. Like, okay. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. Moving on to grants. Colleen's not here today. Do we have any? I no. Okay. No grants. On the correspondence, we have a notice from the West Virginia State Auditor's Office of auction of delinquent and non-entered land to take place on May 25, 2023 at 9 a.m. Second floor, Sheriff's Department, Building 116, Walnut Street. Do you have anything to add on that, Kelly, or just basically what we said? Sorry to put you on the spot. No, that's fine. That's fine. Um, I saw that on the agenda, and I just did want to make it clear that these are for delinquent 2021 real right. estate property. So this is the sale that the sheriff used to hold. Would have been the, in November of 22. Right, and now the auditor's hold it, holding yes. it at your offices. Yes, and the, yes, and uh, Kylan uh, Haney from my office and I traveled to Harrison County last week just to kind of get a feel for how the, the process uh, would happen. It is a, a very streamlined process. The auditor's office has everything uh, in place and our software company, Software Systems, has uh, upgraded our software to be able to collect easily. So it should be a pretty painless process for everybody. Great. All right. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Seeing no unfinished business, move on to new business. First, to consider for adoption a resolution regarding the setting of a public hearing date with respect to the proposed amendment of project plan number two for the tax increment financing district in Montegate County, designated the County Commission of Montegate County Development District number four, the TIF <coughs> district, and the proposed extension of the termination date of the TIF district and approving the form of public hearing notice to be published in connection with the same and matters relating thereto. I would motion to approve the resolution as presented and authorize the president of the commission to sign on behalf of the commission. We'll second any discussion or the date is June se or June 7th, 2023 at 10 a.m. Um, is there anything else the public needs to know about the meeting? It will go through the it will go through the regular um, publishing process. Is uh, Tom? Is there anything else you need to add for the benefit of the public? Very similar to what you all have done before on these plan amendments. Uh, we'll take care of uh, publishing the legal ads, and um, then at that time, you know, there's a, the application that has to be placed of record with the clerk's office, and uh, we'll work with the developer to make sure that it gets done. Other than that, nothing else to really note. Thank you. And this particular one is for the tax increment district, which. Uh, is uh, it's 30 years currently, uh, but the option is to extend it for 10 additional years. So Correct. It's 15, 15 years on the property TIF. Yeah, I'm talking, this one's a sales tax okay. resolution. 10 years on the sales tax. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And this being a public hearing, this is the opportunity, obviously, for anyone to come forward and express their concerns or ask questions about what it is that we're doing. So Certainly. I look certainly, forward to the conversation. Please, anyone come forward. Uh, properly moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next, we have uh, to consider for adoption a resolution regarding the setting of a public hearing date with respect to the proposed third supplemental application for the Economic Opportunity Development District in Mon Montague County, designated University Town Center Economic Opportunity to Development District, the Development District and the proposed extension of the termination date of the development district and approving the form of public hearing notice to be published in connection with the same and matters relating thereto. I move that we approve the resolution as presented and authorize the president of the commission to sign on behalf of the commission. Second, any discussion? Same thing, uh, June 7th is the date for the hearing. Uh, it's at 10 a.m. Uh, and I believe this is the district that uh, Mayor Lewis is talking about. And the option is to extend the district, which is currently 30 years, for another 15 years through 45 years. Just a point of clarification, this is the 
this is the excise district. The other one was the property tax district. The oh, I'm sorry. One. I yeah. got them backwards. Okay. Right. Sorry. Okay. So the first one was on the stiff. Yeah. Where the, the sales tax goes to the state normally. No. no, no, no. She's saying first one. The so first Tom was one is the property. Oh, the first one was the property. Second tax. one. The, when you see EODD, that okay. is the excise. So this is for the stiff. The sales Correct. tax that yes. would normally go to the state doesn't come back to the county. But Correct. so it's, it's to extend it for bill. ten years. Correct. And okay. so ten years from thirty to forty years. Uh, the property tax one is the first one, and that's the one the mayor was talking about, and that's extended from 30 years to 45. Okay. Properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Sorry, our, our attorney was too polite to correct me in public, but I'm sorry, Tom, you were right. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we have a uh, consideration to approve. It's your job. <laughs> Next, we have a consideration to approve a request by Joe R. Pyle, Complete Auction and Realty LLC for the use of the Courthouse Square for a rental investment property auction on May 25, 2023. I move that we approve the request as presented. Second. Properly moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next, a consideration to approve requisition number 75 for the University Town Center Excise Tax District Administrative Expense Fund. The requisition is for $10,429.25, and we have uh, funds that are going to be to Steptoe and Johnson and Municap for their services to the district. Move to approve requisition 75 as presented. Second. Properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next, we have consideration to approve requisition number 21 for the University Town Center Series 2020 Property Tax District Administrative Expense Fund. This Requisition is for $2,930.75. Again, funds are being paid to Municap and Steptoe and Johnson. Move to approve requisition 21 as presented. Second. Properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next, we have consideration of proposal received by the County Commission from the West Virginia Communities Risk Pool for the County's General Liability and Workers' Compensation Insurance with effective date of July 1, 2023. Move to approve proposal from West Virginia uh, Communities Risk Pool as presented. Second. Properly moved and seconded. Any uh, discussion or? The, uh, Renetta, you want to give us the details on the, uh, what the premium is? The total premium for the two, two different, um, they break them out on the, the proposal, but the total is 745939 which is an increase of 15538 for last from, from last fiscal year. Which is a 2.1% increase, so it's very, very modest. Right. So. Okay, properly moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next we have uh, consider to consider for approval requisition 14 for Series 2021 B Harmony Growth Phase 1 Project Fund. Requisition is for... $312,670.55. Funds will be paid to March Weston and Adrian Enterprises. Move to approve requisition number 14 as presented. Second. Properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next, we have a consideration of a request by Monagaya EMS for a letter of support for members to attend the Resuscitation Academy's leadership workshop. Move to approve the letter as presented. Second. And we have representatives from On Health here, but I don't think you're just here in case we had any questions. So there's, uh, we're, we're in support and absolutely ready to approve the letter. So thank you for coming, though. Properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next, we have a consideration to approve a request by VFW Post 548 for use of the Courthouse Square Memorial Day Ceremony on May 29, 2023. Move to approve the request as presented. Second. Properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next, to consider the request from the West Virginia Future Problem Solving Program for funds to support the participation in the Future Problem Solving International Conference by students in Monongalia County. Move to approve funding in amount of $2,500 as, as requested. Second. Any discussion? Yeah, this, this, this group had sent us a request for funding from the commission. Uh, for them to participate in this conference. Uh, that 2500 rep represents a third of the cost of attendance, and um, uh, so um, we're, we're happy to participate and help these. It's a worthwhile uh, 
organization opportunity. Right. I think you have more experience with yeah, that it. Yeah, it's a pretty neat group. Uh, my son participated several years ago in middle school, and these kids go to a destination somewhere in the country. I forget where was this one. Mm. Did it say Massachusetts? Yeah, uh, yeah, University of Massachusetts Amherst. Right. It yeah. was put on hold for a couple of years with COVID, but they meet kids from all over the world. Literally, it's an international conference, and then other kids from the different parts of the country and. They, uh, just what it says, they try to solve problems that the moderators think up for future problems that could come by. It really, uh, it's, a, it's a really nice organization. And Robin Addy is, the, uh, is in charge of the local group that handles it. She does a great job. So yeah, she they, does. they have about 25 students that are participating from several different schools in the county. Right. Well, there are other administrators yeah. probably. So I'm only familiar with Mrs. Addy. So, yeah. <laughs> sorry. But, so, properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next, uh, is consider the request from the, well, we did that one. Uh, consideration to designate Harold Sparinger and James Smith from the Montegalia County Office of Emergency Management, MECA 911, as floodplain administrator and assistant administrator, respectively, for Montegalia County. Move to approve the appointments as presented. Second. Discussion or just? Yeah, this, um, Mike Paw, who recently left the county to pursue other work, uh, held this position in addition to his GIS coordinator uh, responsibility. So um, with with that, we have to fill the position. And most of the counties in the state, this position resides in, in uh, the MECA 911 system, so emergency services. So that's why we've asked uh, Director Smith if he would take on the position, and he had uh, gladly accept it and uh, they will be going through the required training and everything that's required to serve in this capacity uh, but uh, these floodplain uh, issues will then be directed to Mr. Sparinger going forward again with uh, Director Smith acting, acting as his backup. The uh, GIS portion of that um, we're, we're working on with the assessor's office and that that position is either posted or will be posted soon i don't think it's been posted yet but we're looking to fill that position too as a separate position and we'll again we're uh working with the assessor's office to fill that position so that we make sure that we fill that large hole that's left by mr paul and i wish mr paul luck in his future endeavors absolutely um jimmy did you have or hap did you guys have anything you want to add no, okay Thank it's you also, very much. It's important to note that we have two um, getting the certification. It's yeah. been an effort, an overriding effort, especially by Commissioner Sikora to build in redundancy and, and, and backups with our employees in our important positions so that if we have someone leave, we're not in a lurch and we can keep going business as usual. So I, I was in it. touch with Tim Keaton, who's the state floodplain manager, and he, all we need to do is provide them notice and they will then provide notice to FEMA. Okay. who the new designee is so great and i just we received a letter last night i believe all the commissioners received an email about a floodplain issue which we will certainly forward right over to you to address <laughs> it seems pretty cut and dried uh it may be something that kind of dropped through the cracks as mr paul left uh but we will make sure did you get that no, also I okay i will make sure that i forward it to you you and you so that you guys have it just to make sure it's being addressed and if you'd reach out to the individuals and let them know that you're you're working on it i'd appreciate it and also like to thank uh, our county planner andrew gaspray for sort of uh overseeing this transition um and uh, fielding the calls as they've come in and forwarding them to us uh, to make sure that nothing got uh, dropped off when with in when the absence of a, of a floodplain coordinator so properly moved and seconded all in favor aye aye Next, we have reports from elected officials and department supervisors. No, we already heard from Mayor Lewis, so thank you for that. And reports from County Commissioner Sean. Okay, um, since our last meeting last Thursday, we had the Morgantown Area Partnership Dinner. Um, it was very well attended. Uh, I believe they had about seven, 750 people that were there in, in total. Uh, it was very efficient. Uh, in the last couple of years, they changed the program so it didn't drag on with awards and speeches. Uh, they've been very good about um, 
uh, not turning it into any sort of political statements, you know, with allowing public officials to speak or anything like that. And it just went very efficient. I think this was your first one, Renetta, and mm -hmm. you were, I, I, you know, it went very well. I was actually able to get out of there in time to get to University High and watch my daughter's lacrosse game, which is a number of the people that were at dinner when I went mm -hmm. out there were sitting in the stands. It's like, oh, <laughs> I didn't realize how many people were there. But it was very efficient. I want to thank uh, Russ and Eric uh, for all their efforts and their staff for all their efforts in putting on this dinner. It, uh, the um, partnership has come a long way, and it's it's five or so years uh, uh, in being in place. And um, this this dinner is a is is a is a uh, crowning accomplishment to have that many people that are coming in uh, or and networking and uh, supporting the organization. Friday we had staff reports as usual. Um, Monday was May 1. I don't know if you look outside and you see snow or it's, it's hard to believe it's May 1 but it's it's May already and so we're hard to starting to head into a little bit of a busy season here. Uh, Tuesday I had my monthly breakfast with Joe Statler, uh, Ron Lytle, Frank Devano. Um, in the afternoon, I had a meeting with Anthony DeFelice and Devin Smith of the health department. To, just as an update, we have our uh, every two-month meeting in a couple weeks, but they just wanted to give me a, um, a synopsis of what's, going, what's been on their plate in the last couple months. Uh, then last night, I went to the um, uh, Morgantown uh, High Band. They have a sp uh, spring swing where they have the middle schools that are going to be going to Morgantown High. Their bands participate, so South and uh, Suncrest participated. And so I stayed for my, my daughter's participation in that, and then we rushed her to Fairmont. to. Uh, uh, they played in the rain, in the cold rain, uh, against uh, Fairmont, who is... 15 and 0, number one in the state, and um, I think they're. I don't know if there's two times in a row, but they're in the last two three years they've state champs twice. Wow. So, uh, but I'm really proud of the girls. They're playing in this cold weather, and uh, that's one thing they don't cancel girls or, or boys across for anything. They'll play in any type of muck there is. So, um, so got home from got, got home from that pretty late. Today's a regular day. Uh, t today was supposed to be the Mon County Championships at the uh, Milan Park facility, uh, but they were being proactive and looked forward and saw that the weather wasn't going to be cooperating. So they moved that to actually tomorrow. So Mon County Championships are tomorrow afternoon up at the uh, uh, Milan Park facility, uh, and then I also have. Uh, MHS girls across their last home games tomorrow, so I'll be going to that. Uh, Friday we have staff reports, and our, I'll have a broadband sync in the afternoon, and then I'll be heading to Buchanan for a weekend of graduation uh, events. So pretty busy. Next week it gets picks back up again on Tuesday with uh, the, the Juma meeting, our monthly Juma meeting for uh, management of the aquatic and track facility. So um, looking forward to. Uh, Busy, busy May. I hope it starts turning a little bit warmer, though. It's supposed to by the weekend. I'm, I'm getting tired of going out and covering my shrubs every day. Yeah. <laughs> well, just like Sean, I went to a lacrosse game in Preston County last night that was Ooh. a little even colder and mm. precipitation the whole time between rain and sleet. And uh, it was a. Luckily, the second half was a rolling clock, so it didn't take as long. But um, this weather something. Uh, also yesterday participated in the uh, Morgan Tannery Partnership. Uh, they had a, a quorum at Mon Health uh, of the elected officials, uh, Mike Oliverio and um, Joe Statler and Evan Hansen were there to give an update to anyone that wanted to attend on last session's uh, legislative actions and what they got accomplished, what they didn't get accomplished, what they wanted to get accomplished. And it was a, were very well attended and very informative and we I thank those officials for participating. It was a, it was a nice event Matt put on. So. I think I've spoken enough for the day, so I have a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. We're gone.